most, most of you people here know who I am. Uh, Paul Padavano. Uh, some of the people I don't know who you are, but uh, Paul Padavano. Okay? He's, not, he's, he's, he's Irish. Yeah. Did you bring any other? No, they told me to bring two pieces. That's what Fred said to bring more. I don't know. Listen to these people. I asked him, I said, just bring two pieces. So I bought two. It's a long time since I made myself interesting. With my wife, I had to do that in 1963. I'll try to do the best I can now. I uh, always liked art, but I didn't know how to do art. But I always enjoyed it. I started watching Bob Ross with that, you know, with this stuff. I said, well, that doesn't look too hard. So I could practice doing this. And then they had, gave a free course in the Station Library for watercolors where I live. And I started getting interested in watercolors. I didn't do any oil, oil paintings yet. And uh, through the course of the years, I'm painting about since 1996, 97, around that time. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the exact date, but it was in cold weather. Uh, I've made a whole new set of friends. You know, like Freddie's a close friend of mine would go away. And we'd spend a lot of time together, friends at Carmine. And uh, I have a whole new set of friends, which has really been a great experience for me. A lot of you people, too, are personal friends of mine. But at my house, we went out, Mike over there, and stuff like that. Other people. I just said that right now. <laughs> so uh, I crucified the guy. <laughs> 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 he wanted to be interesting. That's it. You know? Yeah, I'm trying to do the best I can. All right. <laughs> I didn't know you could bring more pictures in. I do have about 50 <laughs> pictures, Frank. So I joined. I joined a lot of clubs in Long Island as many as I can to show my work. I call up libraries and other places and I show my work. I just don't make mention of it all the time in newsletters because I just don't get around to it. Like I do have work in the, uh, this month I got about 15 pieces of Babylon. Uh, Babylon, uh, a story of Federal Bank. Next month I'll be in uh, Deer Park Library for two months and the month after that I'm going to be in the Bayshore Library, in the Station Library. Uh, well, you go down the line. Hampton Library, the town hall in, in West Ham, uh, South Hampton, I've got to find out where the place is before I go. I'm going to have about 50 paintings in there. I've got to take a, a trial run and see where this place is. All right, so uh, I got started in the war clubs, was my first medium. Somebody told me that the, uh, in Brightwater, there's a, there's a group out there that does uh, still lifes in watercolor. And I started going there because those people were a lot better than me. I used to watch what they used to do so I could learn. And while I was going there, I met Freddie. Yep. And Freddie and I became friends. Well, his style was a lot different from mine. He, his drawings is much more detailed than what I do. Uh, but I learned a lot from going to other groups, and then I joined this group. I'm, I probably won't belong to this group the longest out of all the groups that we have over here. And uh, I started painting watercolors. Now, this, this painting here, I had in the uh, Audubon. Uh, group in the uh, Sal McCundy Club, and uh, if you ask me what it is, I'll tell you Stony Brook, like in the early 1900s, but it really is in my brain, I just made it up, but it seems like when I go outside shows and here in Long Island, everybody wants to know where it is, so I have to make up a location. <laughs> That's Sam Carbon, this episode, <laughs> So if I'm doing a show in Port Jeff, I'll say, that's Port Jeff, like about 1920. Oh, yeah, it's a little bit of that information. That's where's your flashbulb? Whatever you want it to be, that's what it is. Because, you know, instead of buying the painting for the quality, you know, I want to know the location and then you buy it. You know what I mean? So uh, a friend of mine gave me this big book from Newsday, uh, thick, and it's all like pictures of Long Island from 1890s to the present time. So I said, which I don't, I gave the book away, but uh, I said, well, I got the reference from that book from Newsday, which, you know, sometimes I did take some stuff in there, but uh, this one I just made up out of my head. This is, uh, which, you know, I like, to, I like to put these accents, of, a lot of times I put these flowers and these picket fences in front of the uh, houses, because picket fences people like, you know. Uh, they don't like stone walls so much, they like picket fences, so if there's a stone wall there, if there's a stone wall there, take the stone wall away and put the picket fence there. I said, that doesn't look like my house. I said, that's what it looks like now. 
And another thing too, uh, like picket fences, I was riding out in the East Mariches one time, and there was a house very similar to this with a picket fence and, a, and the flowers around, so I stopped to look at it, and I says, no, maybe I'll do a quick sketch of this, I'm looking at the house. I was put my head up like all the neighbors come, uh, uh, coming out of the house, looking at my car, so, uh oh. They might think I'm casing the house. I see the rope going over the tree. I said, better get out of here. You know? <laughs> so it was time to go. You didn't have the black hat. No. <laughs> there was no case the house. It's, it's a hard time admiring people's houses today. You think you're looking to rob them. And at this painting here, I had a smaller version of this with the road going the other way. You have to change it around. Going this way and back. And that's when I had the Bayard Arboretum, the last show that we had. Uh, this is beautiful. So somebody saw it from the uh, Briarcliff College. Is that the one that's out there in uh, yeah. Patchogue? Patcho. 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 And they said, that they called me up and said, would you please put this in the, in the Briarcliff College show? And I, I didn't want to tell them I sold it. I sold it at that show. So I said, all right, yeah, I'll put it in. But I did it again, but I made it bigger. <laughs> and because they have a lot of room there. So I just made it. And I had to change it around a little bit because then it wouldn't be original. So I see Claude Monet does the same thing. He'll put a bridge in the fog and then the same bridge in the same thing would be a sunny day. So I said, if he could do it, I'll do the same thing. So I'll go going this way instead. It's a nice instead, of, instead of coming down. So I tried so I brought that in because uh, Doug Broadhurst or I don't know if he's here. Is he here? Yeah. 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 And Doug said it was uh, Doug does dynamite watercolors. And he liked this painting too. So if he liked it, you know, I says, well, it must be must be decent. T tell, them, okay. tell them about, you teach people. Oh, I teach at uh, Watercolors in the, uh, Freddie comes to, but I don't teach him. He teaches, <laughs> yeah, but you know what's so amazing about Paul? Paul teaches a, a class at a church, and he does it for nothing, and he does all the, all the stuff on Saturday, and he does it on Tuesday, and these people love him, because he does it out of his heart. Yeah. And yeah. it's something that's really, really, really cool. Well, you know, I go and, and I go to try to help them once in a while. Yeah. Go out there and I well, they wanted you to do a class on perspective, which yeah. you've been doing for the last two years. You've been doing yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So anyway, uh, I got uh, I didn't want to teach how to do watercolors because I just want to stay home and teach. And the end of myself, who says teach, and I said no, I can teach. I go on for two weeks back. I find this. No, I don't teach. So I, I, now I, I got to a point where I really enjoy it. All my friends. All the people in my class that became my friends. Mario came down there a few times. It's about, 30 people. It's about 30 people. It's about 30, 35 people 35. between Saturdays. And the thing is that sometimes, uh, like there's a group in Patchwork that was getting together, and I couldn't get a hold of them because I wanted to join. It was not far from me. But they got a hold of me. He says, we heard you got a class. We want to come. So we got some, uh, a large group. But sometimes they chip in and give me 100 bucks every once in a while. So, uh, stuff like that goes good. Uh, uh, and, and that's it. I teach uh, the world. Oh, when I went to the Sation Library to uh, learn watercolors, uh, the person that was there moved to Santa Fe, New Mexico. But while he was there, he taught for free also. So I says, if he can give to the world his art, yeah. I can do the same thing that's too. Good. And a, lot, a, a lot of people there thanked me since the one person there was having. Uh, panic attacks. And they were saying, I don't have no more panic attacks. They all I do is paint all day. You got me interested in painting. And other people said the same thing too. I made friends. I got out of the house. Yeah, I don't know what to do with my time. So, uh, I don't know. It, it, it did good. For some, and I enjoyed doing the class too. I mean, it's tiring when I come home. I don't feel like doing anything but sitting on a couch when I come home. But I do enjoy the class. And the hardest thing is to do is what we're going to paint next. Yeah, um, that's it. Luckily, the spring is coming around, cut some tulips out and uh, put them in a jar or something, do some still lifes or something like that. I don't know, how's it go? And uh, that's about all I can say about myself. If you want to ask me anything about, about the watercolors, like, I learned most of the watercolors, not by taking classes. I took a couple of workshops. I took workshops. The first workshop I took was with uh, uh, Mel, uh, Mel uh, Isbin, uh, yeah, and then uh, Tony Couch. And uh, there was one other one, I can't remember who it was. But uh, the greatest teacher I did was not with them. It's just by looking at other paintings. I get a magazine of other paintings and watercolors. I do oils too. I just didn't bring any oils in today. Because I use people know me as a watercolorist, but I brought my watercolors in. Is to look. So I see Mel, Mel Staben. 
I think he might, he's a real nice guy too. And I'll say that. I see what it does. It'll put like blue or purple here, and over here where, the, where it's a little lighter than here, you can put a shot of yellow. And uh, I create, here's my uh, counterpart. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> the yellow here in the shade. So I try to tell my students and you people that paint too. I mean, I can't tell Walter Schick over there and Larry Johnson what to do. They, they, what I what I'm learning, they forgot. No, they invented this. Yeah. <laughs> so I just try to break up the colors instead of one whole thing of yellow. Put a little maybe red in there and a little bit of shadow, a little bit of yellow. Uh, if I have cadmium yellow light, I'll put some yellow ochre mixed in just to make them that one one solid color because it looks boring like that. You know, and uh, exactly. the same thing with the grass too. Most of the grasses that you see here, the greens I mix with blue and uh, yellow to make my uh, my greens. And uh, in this one too, I uh, this one I, I started out with uh, a lot of orange. And as you can see, I added masking fluid here, which I don't like using too much. We lose your hard edge. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I get one of those uh, brushes that are a little strong, and I wipe around to take the edge out of the. Uh, wow out of the uh, color, yeah. and I add more color to it. And uh, masked out the uh, birch trees, because that's what they wanted at Briarcliff College. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's what they wanted over there. And I added some sap green in some certain spots, made the center look lighter to make it attractive. And no, it's not. It Doug said it looks good, so I think you it must look good. You like travel with your spots, Doug's good. You like travel with your spots. Okay. It's very beautiful. Oh, thank you. I'll try the best I can. Did you always want to be an artist? So tell everyone what you did for a living. I was a sanitation worker. Okay. No, I went. Well, you want, I went into the Navy. I went into the Navy because either you got drafted or you or you joined. So when I got out of the Navy, Friday, Saturday, they gave me the test for the sanitation department. So I wasn't going to take the test because I figured I'd never get the job. But I took the test and I did get the job. So luckily they gave me my pension so I could have time to paint. But all the time that I was painting, you know, my brother's a sculptor, he did a demo here once. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, so he, I used to go with him to the uh, Metropolitan Museum, uh, the other one with the, uh, the modern art one, yeah. whatever that one is, <laughs> one the, the, the Finch clothing. So I liked all that stuff. I mean, I can't paint, paint like Gainsborough, you know. <laughs> or singing sergeants, so like that. You know, I can't tell you, but I liked it. <laughs> Did you paint like, as a kid? No. I used no. to draw a lot, though. When I was in school, like Freddie, when the teacher used to talk, I used to draw instead. Of, I used to, really to listen to us. I have a memory that I can listen to you and remember, you know, and so I used to draw. So drawing is, uh, is you know, is important. Although painting like this, you don't draw at all. I mean, this is, you know. I mean, I feel like a gorilla can do this thing. Once you paint, you can't wait. Well, I'm just saying, that's not a hard painting to do. I mean, it looks good. This one's a little bit more difficult, although this one might be a little bit more... No, do you use reference for both of them, or not? This, I, this, this thing here was, you know I told you that Newsday magazine? Right. There was a, a, a black and white like that. I think it said Stony Brook, like the turn okay. of the century. Right. So that's what, that's what I did. And you know, uh, plus like you know, Stony Brook, you do like 500 hours. You know? yeah. I mean, he does that. I can't. I don't have to I drink too much coffee to do all those hours <laughs> like that. You know, I think that, I so I can do like maybe two, three hours the most. That's it. Yeah, it's very interesting. The sky is beautiful. Oh, thanks. That's what I like in paintings with skies. I used to look at other artists' work, like I told you, and I like I like the skies. You know. Do you find it difficult though, going doing something oil painting and having that mindset and and learning how it? Does that. Like the there, there are certain paintings that I look at that I say this is an oil and this is a watercolor. And you can just switch. Yeah, I, I, I can do that. Yeah, but I, I don't use the oils like the the, red, the turpentine oils. I use the water based. Okay. Oils because my wife says the turpentine ones smell, oh. and she didn't want me in the house with that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll find another place to live. <laughs> or switch to the yellow. Well, I tried acrylics and uh, a 
couple of times you, you curled shouldn't even brush it. What's the point? I mean, if you're going to do acrylics, do watercolor. I mean, it's, I yeah. can see the... I well, I, I, I say, well, you I, see acrylics like oils, they're a little yeah, more acrylics. If, I can, if, if someday you want me to do a demo for you people, I'll clearly yes, do a demo. Yeah. Now, a lot, of, a lot of what I do when I'm doing skies, you, you said you like skies. I, too many, I didn't know you could bring more paintings in. I was told to bring two. I wish you had. A lot of times when I put uh, the paint down on water, I'll tip the thing like this, you know. And then when the water runs, and then there's like some blotches left there of uh, the white of the paint because I dipped it. People say, how did you do the clouds? I didn't do anything, the really gravity did it. But it's just moving around like this and get the spray bottle, but I tell them it's a special technique. <laughs> and you move the paint around as you want the cloud to look. It goes that too far out, and sometimes I let it on the floor. <laughs> and stuff like that, put a newspaper on the floor and stuff. And that's what I do. That one, I, just what I do with the brush. That's, yeah, that's really you know, that I did with a brush. But there's a lot of tipping and moving around, spraying. And you can do that with waves too. Like you get a wave and yeah, you're gonna spray up and the, uh, the the pigment will go up and the top will be white and it looks like the breaking of a wave. You in, in watercolors. Yeah, right. Try to do that in oil. Well, you know, oils you can do it too, but like painting the sky in oils is like painting with duco cement. You put the thing down and you, can, you, you, know, you start getting aggravated with uh, the it takes a lot of strength. Did you bring any paint? Yes, I did. You want me to help you? I have Okay. Okay. Oh, you want me to talk more? Oh, okay. Am I have any questions? You know, don't make them too hard. <laughs> no, no, wait a minute. Are you a Long Islander originally? No. Well, Brooklyn's part of Long Island, right? Everybody comes to me and says, hey, you come from Brooklyn, don't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah I said, yeah. 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 Even when I don't talk, I say, come from Brooklyn. This guy came up to me, I was in the Navy, and says, I didn't say anything. He says, hey, you're from Brooklyn? I said, yeah, I didn't know. He says, you look like Brooklyn. I moved out in 1979. Ah, quite a few years ago. Yeah, 79. Like, so you were painting yeah. since then? Right. No, since uh, 96, 96. Wow. 97, around there sometime. Yeah, something like that's that. That's very good. Yeah. That's very wonderful. I love that painting. Yeah. You think I should put that in the water barn? By the time the water barn comes around, I'll do something better that's than that. But you changed your technique uh, a few years ago. You were, you were painting uh, and grew. You advance yourself. I well, I can't try to paint every day. Yeah. The only you see when, when I when I do something, yeah. I don't want to be the best. I just want to be in there with the big guys. Yeah. When I play tennis, I want them to be a good tennis player. So I play every day. When I paint, I don't look like I play tennis every day. Now I look like a bust of a yeah, beer. Yeah, but bust of a whatever. <laughs> uh, so when I started painting. <laughs> Like to be up there with the big guys, you gotta paint every day. I mean, they're painting like 40, 50 years. I'm only painting like 15 years and I'm trying to catch up to them. That's all I want to be. If I'm the best, I'm the best. But I'm not there yet. <laughs> I just keep on painting and painting as much as I can. You know? So I just, the thing is that when, I, when you paint every day, you don't know what to paint next. You know what I mean? Sometimes I find things like in the newspaper. Uh, Wednesday's paper, there was a little picture of the. Uh, Fire Island Lighthouse. Oh yes. And at night, so I, I, it's about this big. It's a little bit bigger than a I took it out and I made a painting of it. I wanted to put the water in it too. Mm -hmm. Well, it was a photograph. It wasn't. Uh, yeah. Another painting. Sometimes I'll see another painting. I'll borrow something from that painting and put in another painting. You know what I mean? I mean. I mean, Claude Monet and Vincent van Gogh, they did the same thing. I watch shows about as that. As long as it's in the paper, you, you can know? pick it up. And yeah. Work. I mean, it's, it's like, like if you paint something. The Fire Island Lighthouse must have been painted 500 times in, in one year. Yeah. So you can't say, well, you know, coffee, that guy's painted, because everybody else painted it, too. Yeah. You know, that boat over there in the Maritime Museum? Mm. That black boat, that's another one that everybody painted all the time. The Montauk Lighthouse. So, you know, it's just... It's like it's off, so you, you uh, yeah, what, it, what it says, Paul, is that you can get your reference from anywhere. Yeah, that's what I do. Okay. All over the world, because you've been around the world, too. Yeah. Well, sometimes like just stuff will just come to my head. You know? yeah. Sometimes I'll see something that I still something watch. Something you saw. Puts me to sleep. Something you saw. Watching. 
Sometimes I watch Bob Ross and I get an idea of what he's doing. So he does nice guys too. I watch these guys what he does. And he's dead. <laughs> Somebody told me one day. At the time, everybody on Channel 21 was dying at the time. That, that woman there, uh, uh, Van Slay, yeah. Van yeah. Child, uh, what's her name? The other ben guy, White. Zoom It In, ben whatever White. his name is. Uh, yeah, the White. other guy, uh, Zoom It In. Oh, 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 Alexander. Uh, yeah, he thought uh, Alexander was well, the original. He said, once you get a job, learn from him. Ross, yeah. 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 Ross learned from him. Yeah, once you get a job on Channel 21, he said, everybody dies. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> get a job, I'm yeah, dead. <laughs> Any other questions you'd like to ask? No. Somebody said that I should be a stand up comic. Uh, yeah. Do you prefer oil or watercolor? Yes. You know, that's hard to say. You know, sometimes like when I do, I'll bring an oil the next time we have a critique over here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I do an oil and the sky's really like, it. wow, what a beautiful sky. What a I like nice paint. Colors, yeah, well you see, the, but the oil's in the I see oils. I like the Not the new colors. ones now. No, but I still like the watercolors. Okay. Uh, the, the, water, the watercolors are a little easier to do with sky. Like I said, I put the, I water down the paper first so you don't have an odd edge. Okay. Yeah. You don't do watercolors. And then I put the color in and then, when it's semi-dry, I start moving it around like this. And it's, if it doesn't come out good, I did a sky last week, and the sky didn't come out good. I said, it doesn't look good. I put it under my sink, not my bathtub, because my wife will kill me. Put it in the sink, stainless steel sink. You know scrub brush that you scrub the floor with? I got that on the paper, and it all came, it didn't come down to pure white, but it came out like a little yellow, so I can work the sky over again. Was what that what weight paper pounds? for? 300 pounds? No, 140. 140. You're kidding. Yeah, 140. Yeah, 140. Yeah, 140. Yeah, 140 cold press. Yeah, 140, 140 cold brush. Wow. Yeah, yeah, if you buy a good one, I know how Michael's 140. I usually get like uh, uh, Chief Joe's uh, Kilimanjaro. Uh, you like Archer's? Bobby. Archer's is the best, but Archer's you need, uh, you gotta take a neck with you to buy Archer. <laughs> Archer's is expensive. Yeah, Archer's is good. I just spent $120 for 30 feet of paper. Yeah. Um, when you, sometimes you say when you look at something, either a reference or you're inspired by something, and you say to yourself, well, that's an oil painting or that's a watercolor. What's the de deciding factors that you that I think, make I you think feel? When I see a painting more dramatic, you know, dramatic sky, big mm -hmm. waves, that to me, that's an oil. You know, I mean, I could do that in watercolor too, I've done it. But it looks better in oils, you can get more, uh, you know, like the wave break, you can get more, see, more see, out of like the See, that's fine. I think you can do that in watercolor, much, much better. If you gosh it, but I don't like to use no, gosh if I can help it. I mean, it's acceptable today, but I, I still don't. In other yeah, words, it's an individual thing. He when you yeah. Whatever media you think. Wash it, solid watercolor. Did you, uh, does everybody, uh, you know, you asked me like oils, or, is everybody familiar with Frederick Church, Hudson yes. Middle School, yeah. Niagara Falls, yeah. and yeah. Arcadia yeah. National Park, you ever see the painting of Niagara Falls and Arcadia, mm -hmm. I went to Lewis Washington DC to see Frederick Church's uh, Niagara Falls and it wasn't there, I went down to Washington for nothing, oh. and I went to the Brooklyn Museum for, for, for some reason and it was there, so it was like, I finally saw it. But anyway, you see the way he highlights the white. When he has like uh, Arcadia National Park, is a great painting by him. He has these big waves hitting the rocks, uh, and uh, it, the waves have like three values. It has the uh, green and the blue, and then a little slightly colored. And then the very, just a very tip, just a couple of dots. He has white, and, and that that pops the whole painting. You know, if you see the thing as uh, as a photograph, it doesn't do it justice. You got to see it live. It really is nice. We saw him in the... Albert Bierce, that's another one I saw. Yeah, we saw him at the, at the Met. Yeah, there in the American Wing. The Erie Canal, the one the Erie Canal that he did. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, those are the things I, I like painting water, watercolor, uh, oils like that. Yeah, I mean, you can't paint Chile and then say, it's, you know, oh, that's downtown Holbrook, you know what I mean? It look like Holbrook. All right. You got it. Thank you.